Hi everyone, um, it's Derek again and uh, this particular video I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what segmentation is and how we can use cluster analysis in SPSS to help you create a very quick uh, cluster analysis and understand uh, what are the results. Now if you remember from the previous video, what I did was um, I explained to you a little bit about what is heuristic pattern search from data and asked you also what is uh, SDP, segmentation, targeting and pro uh, positioning. So for this particular video, we're going to take the first uh, section, which is understanding what segmentation is. Now, if you can see from uh, this particular slide here, uh, what I've shown you is basically asking you what defines a segment. Um, so it's actually very simple. Usually a segment is a group that groups together, which is internally homogeneous, which means they share the same characteristics and defines itself away from other groups, which is why it's externally heterogeneous. And if you were to place it onto a two by two uh, column or sorry, a two by two um, graph, you will see that each of the uh, particular segments actually has their own characteristics which uh, defines itself away from other segments yeah i guess the most important thing you ask yourself is whether your segmentation is valid now there is no hard and fast uh, rule to say whether your segmentation is valid because it all really depends on the size of the segment and whether it is a meaningful and relevant or even intuitively identified by constituent variables. And these constituent variables can range from uh, demographic variables to even uh, characteristic variables, uh, behavioral variables, and so on and so forth. Basically anything that you can think of that is meaningful that actually defines a segment. But the most important thing is um, when you do cluster analysis or segmentation, you got to really understand why uh, the variables that you use are chosen. Okay, so uh, I'm going to take you through a very simple example right now on how to do cluster analysis using this particular uh, 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 um, data set called HATCO. Right now, HATCO is basically a B2B um, data set that has variables on uh, cate both categorical and um, continuous variables. And I'm going to show you now how to do that. Okay, so first off, I have my data set here, uh, the head code data set. And as you can see, uh, what I'm asking you to do is to look at the various uh, data sets uh, um, on continuous variables and as well as categorical variables. Now, I'm going to use the uh, I'm going to show you how to really create the uh, cluster analysis here. First, you go to Analyze, and you go to Classify, and you take two-step cluster. Now, one of the reasons why I love to use two-step cluster here is because uh, two-step cluster uh, actually can use both categorical and uh, quantitative variables, and it creates um, very nice visuals for you to uh, look into, dwell a little bit deeper. Uh, I'm not saying that the other cluster analysis tools are not good, but I still find that this one is one of the best. Okay, so I just click on two step cluster. Oh, sorry, just reset everything. So um, I want to put the if you see these uh, little uh, nominal variables here. Now, if you don't know what nominal variables are or categorical variables, please go and see one of my other videos where I explain to you about data measurement, and it's one it's under a series of uh, research and data analysis. So anything that you see a step here, yeah. Now these are what we call the categorical variables, and I'm just going to push it over to the categorical variable uh, section. Uh, we're not going to worry about the ID. Uh, we want the X1, all these delivery speed, price, flexibility, manufacturing, sales force, uh, and all the way up to satisfaction level. Now, this is where we're going to push to the continuous variable. Now. One of the important things here I want to show you is this thing here, number of clusters. Now, uh, number of clusters usually most of the time people uh, will automatically just, either you can you can actually ask the system to run the number of clusters for you, which maximum will create about 15 clusters. But uh, what I would suggest is that possibly maybe you might want to think about creating your own specified number of clusters. 
Now, there is a paper uh, from in 2015 that has said that it is better to create uh, meaningful uh, clusters for business sense. Usually, it is about uh, three to six clusters. So, in this respect, I want to create five clusters just to show you um, uh, the difference bet between that. Now, you can play around with this. Remember, this is heuristic. So, which means that whatever gives you the most business meaning yeah this is the one that you decide on of course then of course you also have to check on whether the cluster uh, gives you good meaningful size or not okay uh, now uh, this is let me just come back to this to you bit now I want to tell you cluster sizes yeah now cluster sizes uh, really is about um, understanding manageable and meaningful variable segmentation. Yeah, remember it's about cluster size. You have to make sure that the adjustable number of cluster sizes, and also uh, understand how many clusters you want. Okay, so let me just go back to the video. Uh, in terms of options, we don't have to worry. In terms of output, this is the one that we must make sure that we have, yeah, which is the cluster membership variable. The reason why we want to create cluster membership variable is because we want to create uh, what cluster each of these uh, numbers here or the cases here fall under. So make sure we click this and then we continue and then press OK. Okay, so this is the general output that you see. Uh, you notice that there are 14 inputs, which is a combination of your categorical and continuous variables, uh, and you specified that you only want five clusters. The cluster quality is just basically to tell you that the clusters are good or fair or uh, how well your clusters is. Now, for social sciences, it's very, very difficult for you to find uh, this purple bar here to come under good. Okay, so even if you got it under fair, that's good enough already. So uh, that that's always a good thing to be able to do. Now, one of the great things I like about this uh, uh, two-step cluster is that when you double-click on the model summary, you get something like this. Okay, and you can open and see more of the visuals. Okay, so let's just go to one here, model summary. Now, in model summary, if you go to clusters, what you can see is a breakdown of the clusters by the actual uh, variables which uh, defines what they are. Uh, so in order to make any meaningful sense, right, now sometimes you may not have that many variables but sometimes you may have more variables. So each of these become a cluster by itself. Okay, so if you look at it, for what the what separates cluster one and cluster two is the price level. You notice that this one, the price level is lower, the price level is higher. But of course, you also have to take into account all the other uh, variables as well. Okay, so when you create cluster memberships, or uh, sorry, when you create clusters, you got to define what these name of these clusters are. Right, so this is cluster one, cluster five, four, three, and two. Um, you have to make your own business sense out of it. That's what I'm saying, basically, and uh, uh, create some sort of meaningful uh, business understanding that defines each of these groups. Okay, uh, you can also uh, play around with some of these features down here. Uh, this is just basically showing you a smaller version. Uh, this is just showing you the level of which of the categories of the clusters in terms of articulation of need between cluster 1 and cluster 3. There is a difference, as you can see, and also other things as well. Take everything into consideration in terms of percentage and as well as any other sort of outputs. Okay, So it's basically a quick way of generating groups for you. Now, for cluster size, I like this one because uh, when you create clusters, you got to make sure that the cluster sizes are quite standard. Okay, 
uh, in a way here actually you can create four clusters but I, I'm just keeping it to five you know just for the sake of this video but you know give it a go again and just try and create four clusters and see if it makes more meaningful sense to you what I really want to show you here is uh, the cluster uh, cell distribution oops sorry yeah cluster sizes cell distribution they give you the number now this number is basically the n yeah the number of uh, cases so cluster 5 has about 24 cluster 1 has about 35 cluster 2 is about 10 now it really really makes more sense if you have more class uh, more um, cases then obviously it would make the clusters uh, much more uh, manageable uh, there is of course the ratio of the largest number of cluster to the smallest number of cluster if you can keep this number to very very small and that will be good because it shows that there's a very good distribution of uh, the cluster memberships uh, select cluster by input so uh, if let's say I select cluster 2 then you notice that in cluster comparison of course you can only see one but if let's say I want to compare cluster 1 and cluster 2 I just hold down my control key uh, see this so this is where the comparison happens this is where the magic happens in two-step cluster you actually can see the difference in the uh, cluster so for example like type of buying situation for cluster 1 and 2 what is the difference uh, cluster 2 is more modified rebuy whereas cluster 1 is more straight rebuy and of course of the big numbers that you can see there okay now, of course if you want to compare all five then you can compare in terms of the characteristics you see that there, clearly there are two groups here clearly there's another two groups here these are clearly three groups here and so on and so forth yeah so again really how you want to play around with the cluster memberships okay uh, also another feature I'd like to show you is uh, the uh, predictor importance now this predictor importance is quite uh, interesting because it shows you which are the most important predictors that creates the cluster membership uh, break, break, breakdown. So in this, they're telling you that uh, type of buying situation is the most important predictor uh, variable importance. Now, why did they show you this? Because if you look at at uh, cell distribution, cluster size, uh, uh, cluster comparison, yeah, you see the type of buying situation. Now most of this you can see two cluster, two cluster, two cluster, two cluster. Uh, maybe down here you can see all compilated into one. But very, very, very um, uh, well seen here is three. Yeah, so that is why the one predictor that creates the definition of groups the best. That is the one that is the most important. That is why if you notice in predictor importance, you see that type of buying situation goes high. Okay, And uh, like again I said, um, cluster analysis is really much uh, based on how much uh, you want to create the cluster uh, on meaningful. Um, so there are two few things you need to look here in cluster uh, analysis. Okay, Remember that if you want to use two set cluster you take into consideration both categorical and quantitative data uh, adjust able to see cluster ratio so try to keep the cluster ratio as small as possible there is no set definition of how much the cluster ratio should be and of course specify the number of clusters now to make create more meaningful at least about uh, three to six clusters and oh one more thing i forgot to show you about the cluster membership here if i go back to my output my data set just now we click that tick to create cluster membership right now you see this cluster membership here this is the oh, this is my old ones sorry so the cluster memberships here so 
once you have defined or you give a label to what those clusters are cluster one maybe you can say buying type this cluster two buying type this cluster three buying type this then you can create all your cluster memberships here just like how you create uh, labels and variables for your clusters okay uh, of course uh, that one is another video please go and see my uh, video on uh, uh, defining uh, quantitative uh, categorical variables yeah, in my research analysis. And uh, if you have any questions, please uh, ask me. If not, thank you very much, and I'll see you. Bye.